Gaza is now under siege as the war in Israel continues to escalate after a brutal attack by terrorist group Hamas. Heartbreaking images of loss and inhumanity continue to come out of the region. And ABC News chief national correspondent Matt Gutman joins us now live from the war zone. Good morning, Matt. Listen, where are you right hey, now and, and what are you seeing? I'm just outside the town of Sderot, and you see this line of cars torched, shot. Um, there are bullet casings everywhere on the floor here, on the ground. And just at that intersection, I don't know if you can see it, there are soldiers right there and an ambulance. There has been small arms fire here for the past hour and a half, but this is where um, a Hamas pickup truck with a machine gun on the back started gunning down people coming back from that party early Saturday morning. All the people, most of the people in these cars, you can see there are more cars back here, were killed. Some of them managed to scatter. But this is one of dozens of scenes like this across the south here this, this morning. Matt, Israel has ordered a complete siege of the Gaza Strip, and they are moving soldiers into position at the border. What do you expect to happen next in the counteroffensive? It seems at this point that it's extremely probable that Israel is going to mount some sort of incursion into Gaza. We're hearing about 360,000 reservists called up in three days. Um, that is a tremendous number at this point. Never have so many been called up so quickly. The amount of anger in Israel is monumental. Um, people want Hamas destroyed both militarily and politically, and I think it would be very difficult for Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu not to launch some sort of significant incursion at this point. Um, sorry, there's some soldiers calling out. We have to leave. Why? Are, why what's going on? The, uh, the, ID, the IDF has issued uh, uh, an immediate alert that everybody has to leave. There is some security incident uh, just near us. Then okay, have, uh, so this is what I was talking. There's been this yeah. battle do that we've been hearing do. about for... Um, we're going to... So we're going to just go walk do to what the you car gotta if do. you guys want to stay with you. us. Yeah, Whoopi. Go ahead and okay. do what you got to do. Okay, if you... Yeah. We're okay. We're walking to the car anyway, which is right okay. over there. But I just, can I explain what's going on? Yeah. They've yeah. had this battle, and I just want to show you what's going on here. These armored jeeps are going towards where we've been hearing this incessant gunfire. And just on the other side of that bridge, we've seen a large number of troops head in that direction. You see the ambulances over there. And that's where we are in this town. It was called Kibbutz Kfar Aza earlier today, where we saw the evidence of this horrific massacre. Dozens of people killed, and Israel had just tried to gain control of it. But as you can see, they do, they do not have control of the situation right here. It's believed there are still militants lurking around. And as we were there, Whoopi, we saw people being pulled out. They still don't know how many people have been killed there. Um, okay, given what's going on, I think we're going to hop in the car. Um, this is our vehicle right now. But uh, as you can tell, this is obviously a massively dynamic situation here. Um, and the battle in Gaza is definitely not over at this point. And Israel does not have a firm grip over the south, despite having so many hundreds of thousands of reservists here. Yeah. I'm be careful, back to you guys. Get in the car, Matt. Oh. Yeah, Matt, Get in be the careful. Car. And this... Thank you. Well, that's what happens when it's live and, and you're in the middle of it. Oh, my God. Um, we got our fingers crossed that he's safe, he's going to remain safe, and that uh, we will come back and... Yeah. Yes? Okay. So, I mean... It, he, he it's had, just... Yeah. I'll say it's just gutting to watch. Um, I... Listen, this is tragedy, and it's something that I was really struck with. I have struggled with understanding how the Holocaust was able to take place in my grandparents' lifetime. But you see the Jewish people being targeted in a way that is so horrific. At a music festival, there are reports of babies being beheaded. We are witnessing true evil, and I just, my hearts are with the Israeli people. My heart is praying for a peaceful solution to this, and also for the incredible journalists who are making these stories told. They put themselves in such harm's way. Well, and the innocent Palestinians, because there's so much death right now at the hands of a terrorist organization, Hamas, whose sole charter mm -hmm. is to destroy Israel. No matter what you give them, land, whatever, they will keep coming back until they destroy Israel. And they're using their own people as shields. So they plan to put themselves in schools and other places where women and children are and tell their people when Israel says, get out, which there isn't really anywhere to go, but their, their people say, don't panic, stay right here, because they use them as shields and then toy with the international conversation about this. And 
they are a terrorist organization that has brutally committed war crimes. They are dragging people through the streets. They rape, they pillage, they continue to. And they're threatening now for any response from Israel to kill and, and broadcast the killing of all the hostages. I, I think, you know, for me, I'm not a geopolitical expert or anything like that. I've said many times my grandfather is Jewish, and so my family has been roiling about this. What is, what is terrifying to me also is that there is so much anger on the Israeli side, Ar arguably correctly so, because they've never seen this kind of massacre on their land in 50 years. But now you have a defense minister that is saying we are going to close the strip and put 2.2 million innocent civilians in the Gaza Strip, and we're going to launch an offensive against those 2.2 million people, half of which are children providing no food, water, or electricity. There are though. losers on both sides of this, and they're civilians. Why, minds much better than mine, have tried to figure out a way for peace in the Middle East. I pray I thought uh, I thought Jared Kushner was supposed to do it. Yeah, I, so, so up, allegedly. You, you, can, you cannot have peace in Palestine while Hamas is part of the Palestinian government. That's what it fundamentally comes down to. Hamas is a State <coughs> Department sanctioned terrorist organization. They are part of the unity government That's in Palestine. Right. They victimize the Palestinian people. The, the way for they... a free Palestine mm -hmm. is to get the hell rid of Hamas. And by the way, this attack was able to happen because it was backed by Iranian operatives who were funding it and giving them, them the weaponry. Did, they, did, did they have where six billion dollars Did Hamas yes. really think that the Israelis would not go back at them? No, they knew. I I mean, put wait a second. This people. business of, of the Palestinians, we, our heart goes out to all innocent civilians. Yes, yes. Absolutely. But the Israelis will warn them we're coming in. Yes. The, this group did not warn them. They killed teenagers, kids they who were just out, just out like our kids could be ha at a rock concert. They kidnapped infants. They, 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 babies, they, yeah. they I believe they kidnapped three children from one family. These are monstrous people, the Hamas people. They don't care about their own and lives and they don't and care they about do other lives. They do not care about anybody's life except power. And so I would like to know who's behind this, because it's very interesting that now I would think Putin is sitting back and saying, wow, well, they're going to send their money to Israel. It leaves us vulnerable, so maybe they the won't send them to Ukraine. They won't send the money to Ukraine now. I'm very suspicious of this. And what did Donald Trump tell Putin when he was in Helsinki? These are questions that need to be answered in this country. I would like to hear the answers for the, like to, to those questions. I'd like to know where $6 billion dollars came from. Yeah, well. When you see those parents, I... those parents whose children have been kidnapped, you, there was a guy, there, I forget his name, Kirby, I think, the general, Kirby. was crying on CNN yesterday. Listen, this is horrific. Terrorist groups are terrorist groups. They are horrific. Yeah. It doesn't matter who leads it. It's a horror. This is what they do. This is what they do. And it's always the people that are always paying the price. The innocent. Always yeah. the innocent people paying the price. We're back with Matt Gutman. Matt, uh, where are you and are you safe? That's what we want to know. So we are safe. Uh, thank you so much, Whoopi. Uh, we've moved back behind this berm. There is a pretty significant um, movement of troops here. We're okay where we are right now, but um, you can hear booms in the distance. There were significant gunfire. There was a helicopter gunship in the air. Obviously, they found something, but we are safe right now, Whoopi. Okay. So tell us, tell us you were, you were describing what was happening. Is, tell us what you're seeing. We are um, just outside of Sderot, and about a mile in that direction is the border with Gaza. Um, just a little bit to the left of where I am right now is this town of Far Aza, which was decimated. This whole area here, all of the towns have been completely evacuated of civilians. Most, many of the people there have been killed. Um, the death toll is over 900. So. Um, we understood that the Israeli military had cleared this area, but that does not appear to be the case. Right. Um, so they think that Hamas militants are still around. They have caches that they've stored food and water so they can just hide out there for hours, days, and then come out sort of as short time sleeper cells. And that's what they believe probably happened here and what is going to be going on possibly for a couple of days in the future. Right. So, so Matt, let me ask you this. President Biden is going to address the country later this afternoon about what's going on in uh, Israel. He's uh, about rushing military supplies uh, to the region, air defenses, including a Navy carrier strike group.
So here's my question. Uh, do you think this, is, this sends a message to other countries like Iran not to escalate this? It might. It's unclear how far the U.S. is willing to go to support Israel's fight against Hamas at this point. And the biggest question, Joy, is does Hezbollah in the north, which is even a more formidable uh, militant organization than Hamas, does it join in the fight? There have been some skirmishes, some deaths on both sides of that border. That would be a huge concern for Israel. And if that were the case, it might need help. Just a reminder. The U.S. has one of its largest weapons stockpiles in the world right here in Israel. Unclear exactly which uh, weapons, but I think the U.S. would come to Israel's assistance in terms of materiel. But they've got to mop this up first because this is also destroying morale here that people know that they're still not safe uh, and that Israel's under this carpet, uh, this rain of uh, rockets from Gaza as well, even as it bombs Gaza and makes life there incredibly intolerable for hundreds of thousands of civilians there as well. It's miserable on the other side as well. Well, Matt, we just witnessed a close call for you now, but you also had one while reporting uh, from an Israeli town two miles from the Gaza border yesterday. We're going to take a quick look. Get in, get in, get in. Oh, inside, 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 please. Everyone inside. Is there anyone else? Uh, no, everything's outside. Inside, thank you. Right. Okay. It's We're okay, inside. yeah. This is all in incredibly dangerous. What are you feeling like in a moment like that? I feel for the people who live here, and it, it gets you get an understanding of what it's like to live under the rain of those explosions, and these towns have completely emptied out. So yes, I was scared, but I also felt these people have been living like this. Um, it is incredibly difficult and disconcerting. Uh, these areas are ghost towns. You don't see anybody moving anymore. Um, and, and that is the situation in a lot of Israel right now. There is a tremendous amount of trauma, a tremendous amount of anger at this point, um, also on the Palestinian side. But that is what is so worrying is that there doesn't seem to be any end in sight. This is going to get so much worse before it gets better. And whatever military operation happens here in the south of Israel vis-a-vis -vis Gaza, it is likely going to last for many weeks. Matt, please stay safe. Please stay safe. You know, we are, we're with you and we're, you know, hoping for the best for everybody. For everybody.